By far the biggest impact is virtualization. When we look at the impact that virtualization has had in the design and planning of networks, but even to a larger degree will have going forward, it truly is astounding. All the way from the greater operational savings driven by the automation capabilities through to, and probably more in a more exciting fashion, the new service creation that can be brought about by implementing some of the capabilities around virtualization, SDN, NFE. It's quite exciting to be working in the industry today, being able to realize some of those benefits. And I do believe that it is going to fundamentally transform the economics of the service provider, but more importantly, the relevance and the value of the network to end users, both business and consumers, in terms of being able to customize and experience the network and the services that they truly need to accomplish what they're looking to accomplish. Juniper's focused on delivering solutions to our customers to give them the right tools to solve the challenges they're faced with on a regular basis. Great example is packet optical convergence. We've been working to deliver true packet optical convergence, allowing for the interface of IP routers with DWDM technology, allowing for a more efficient collapsed core network. Great example of driving greater efficiencies in the network, but it's also not about just efficiency and cost, it's also about service creation. And when you look at where we've been focused, a lot of our focus, focused efforts has been around virtualization, automation, and analytical capabilities. All the way from our Contrail SDN controller that we delivered at the end of 2013, through to some of the new capability around Contrail Cloud, delivering a true cloud and NFV platform, all the way through to greater automation capabilities with Junos. Juniper is giving the tools to the service provider to allow them to reap the benefits of, first, greater automation and cost controls, second, greater ability to turn their network into a service creation platform to start to more agilely and quickly deliver new services to their end users. I think we're at an exciting time in the industry. Uh, the evolution that I expect to see, that Juniper expects to see, is first and foremost a continuing movement down the path of virtualization. When we look at where we are, there has been tremendous hype around some of the technologies around virtualization, but we believe we've, we're moving off of that and Juniper is working with our partners to start to deliver real business value with some of the solutions that we're delivering, like Contrail Cloud, like Junos DevOps, working to be able to deliver the deliver on the promise of virtualization. And so I think over the next 12 to 18 months, we're going to see that continued trend, but more importantly, we're going to see real live implementations and real business value that's being driven from virtualization. So I think first and foremost, that is probably going to be the biggest trend we see. Uh, second, I think we're going to start seeing some new and innovative services that are going to be realized from this evolution and starting to see some of the service providers, some of the early adopters, stepping out and delivering new cutting-edge services that are going to start to compete not only with their traditional customers, but also with some of the uh, more leading-edge, over-the-top players on the internet side who have been delivering some very unique and creative services on their own. So I think when we look at it, it really is going to be those two trends along with continued focus on automation to drive down, drive up the efficiency of the service provider network. And Juniper is committed and focused in on delivering those capabilities to the service providers to help them fulfill those goals. I think when we look at the industry standard evolution, um, it is uh, a gratifying to see many of the industry bodies getting involved and truly contributing to the evolution of the service provider network. Uh, from the Open Networking Foundation's work with SDN all the way through to Etsy's work on NFV, we've seen some great initial strides in terms of moving the the conversation around virtualization forward. That's great, but it's not enough. I think we need to see uh, continued evolution 
at many different levels because as we all know the service provider network is a very complex uh, undertaking and so while our start has been good I think what we should expect to see and what we should strive for, forward with is continuing to evolve the standards and drive a very open modular ecosystem. Great case in point is Open Platform for NFV, a, a new organization that kicked off um, earlier this year that's very much focused around creating that framework required for uh, successful NFV implementations and working very effectively with organizations like Open Daylight to pull together a very integrated approach. So I think the more involvement we can see from different bodies not necessarily duplicating what's being done, but looking at how they can contribute and add to a greater whole, I think is gonna go a long way towards continuing the rapid evolution and adoption around virtualization. I think the MEF can play a critical role. Uh, the MEF has been very much focused around creating an environment where service providers can deliver Ethernet services. And with the approach from a, a very service orientation, I think it puts the MEF in a great position to contribute to what's evolving on the virtualization side of things. And so I think first and foremost, the MEF in all of its great work going forward needs to be thinking about how do we embrace the principles of SDN and NFV of virtualization to ensure that it's consistent with anything that we do to fit into that virtualized service provider network. Um, I think first and foremost that's it. Second is looking at from a service creation standpoint. How can we leverage Metro Ethernet as a part of the broader end-to-end -end solution, as part of the broader service creation engine? How can we leverage Metro Ethernet and have it work very consistently and very seamlessly within that virtual and physical service provider network. So I think it's critical that the MEF, which has done some excellent work in terms of moving the industry forward and standardizing Metro Ethernet and allowing us to reap excellent benefits and gains from Metro Ethernet, how do we continue that work and make sure we fit within this new and evolving service provider network around virtualization? And I think big task, but I think the MEF is up to it. So that's a great question. Um, I think it's always exciting when we see the service providers and industry leading veterans getting together at a conference like Gen 14 and, and seeing where different players are moving the industry, moving the network. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of exciting things that I'm not even thinking about. Uh, but some of the areas where I am most focused now is first of, all, first of all around virtualization, seeing what the service providers are doing in terms of SDN and NFV. Where are they thinking to take this new technology and deliver uh, new services and new innovations of the network? Very exciting topic, very interested in seeing. Uh, any creativity there, seeing how vendors, um, Juniper ourselves, but also other vendors, are looking at driving innovation forward on the virtualization front. I think that's number one. Uh, number two, on the convergence side, you know, we, we've seen a lot of convergence in layers of the network. Uh, packet optical is a, is a great example. So seeing how that packet optical convergence is continuing the trend, gaining momentum, and also integrating in across the, the network from the core to the metro core to the access. I think it's a, a very fascinating time for us and uh, there's a lot of synergies and a lot of efficiencies that service providers can get from looking at advances there. And then uh, last but not least, I think it's around the services side. At the end of the day, everything we do, everything the service providers do, is to deliver new services to their existing customers within a very high quality package. And so looking at what are and understanding what are those new services that with some of the element innovations that are being delivered, what are those new services that the service providers but with the industry behind them are thinking about delivering to their end customers. I think a very exciting phase, a very exciting time, and uh, it's going to be fun to walk around.